the legendary Clarence Page, who I've honored to meet. How are you doing? Oh, it's exhausted, so... Um, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> what, you covered conventions for a long time. First of all, what do you think of the Tampa Convention and this one and the presidential race so far? Well, the funny thing I've noticed in recent years is that you look at the conventions and you can... It, it, if nobody told you which party it was, it's becoming more and more obvious which one it is just by looking at it. I mean... <laughs> You know, one is like covering a summer camp, the other one's like covering a nursing home. Do I need to tell you which party I'm talking about? No. <laughs> you think the uh, Clint Eastwood fiasco had any impact on Mitt Romney, uh, President Chilwell's? I um, don't know if it's, a, if it's a measurable impact. Uh, I think that um, it, it, was, it was kind of bizarre, so it's pretty hard to measure uh, that in terms of uh, traditional politics. I mean, did, did it make people like or hate Mitt Romney any more or less? I think that's just it's just too marginal to put it, uh, to talk about it in those terms. It, it's more, excuse me, I think it's more interesting in terms of, of uh, history and what it says about the state of political conventions now and, and the state how, of media. how important are they uh, for politics as opposed to being a, a big TV show. Because hmm. that's what hmm. they've been since the 60s anyway. Is and um, uh, so it's more interesting to talk about in terms of what convictions are really about, which, which is message control. And in that context, it is bizarre that they let anybody go on stage without <laughs> <laughs> screening in advance. But on the other hand, you know, they had no reason to expect that Clint Eastwood would, would kind of get a little bonky on stage because he, he'd spoken at Republican events before. He he was already an elected mayor of Carmel. Uh, he was not an untested commodity. So they had no more reason up front to expect him to to get bizarre than the Democrats have to expect Bill Clinton to get bizarre. <laughs> now, yeah. if he goes and acts weird, then you'll know that <laughs> none of us knows what's Wait, going on. Are you on. saying that, Bill, you expect Bill Clinton to talk to a chair? I don't expect him to. Uh, I think it would be hilarious if he brought a chair out on stage with him. You know, <laughs> I'm sure that would bring the house down. And uh, I, I wouldn't put it past him, but uh, I expect Bill's going to play it very straight. How do you think this commission is going to go and President Obama, and given last week, I mean, does he have an easier time of presenting his case after last week, a harder time, any change at all? No, I think that um, it doesn't put any additional pressure on him. He's got pressure either way. Both Mitt Romney and Obama have pressure because for months now, they've been even in the polls. Despite all the daily this and that that we've been covering, they've been even in the polls. It's been, yeah. been neck and neck. And after last week, it still looks like it's neck and neck. Uh, it doesn't look like Romney got much of a bump. So Gallup says none. This, um, yeah, so, you know, um, we'll see, but I, I think that that's probably the case. We know by now there have been uh, a, a significant bump. And uh, so I think it's going to be uh, up to Obama, though, to do what a week ago I said Mitt Romney had mm -hmm. to do, which mm -hmm. is the big speech. That's what the convention is all about. Was People that a big speech? Hear. Did Romney, from your estimation, do well, or how, how do you think he did? I thought he talked too much to the choir, mm -hmm. that he talked to the base. Uh, and that's the kind of campaign he's been running, and he has to, to a certain degree, because he, the base doesn't trust him. But, but when he got Paul Ryan, I think he sewed up the base. He's not, not going to get any more votes out of them, uh, because they're more excited about Ryan than they are about him. And he needs to reach out to people in the middle. I, I don't think he did enough of that in the speech, in my estimation. Two questions. Well, I know you got Whereas Obama's got to do both as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to be as hard for him to How reach his base. How has media changed for you, for your perspective, in the convention since then? And also, you know, to, to wrap up on the engagement, but mm -hmm. what advice do you have for blacks in media, to the younger blacks just getting into the media? Well, uh, first of all, uh, how, how the media changed. They are, they're more fragmented now. you got more different types of media. And um, TV changed political conventions forever, starting in 1960, uh, and political, uh, for that matter, presidential election campaigns with the, with the Kennedy debates, Kennedy-Nixon debates in 1960, which I was old enough to watch. I was about 13. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, then uh, TV advertising came into its own with uh, the LBJ campaign in 64, uh, that Daisy ad that uh, accused Ray Goldwater of being about to start World War III. The ad only aired once, right before mm. the Ed Sullivan show. 
but we're still talking about it. <laughs> you yeah. think it aired every yeah. night yeah. for three months or something, but it, it aired once, but we're still talking about it. They still show it on TV, and that was what happened in the beginning. Well, they showed it once, and then the news kept showing it again and again, you know, because people were talking about it. Like the first and, viral um, video, in a sense. Exactly. Right? That's Basically. exactly right. Yeah. And. Um, now the um, so now we uh, it's fragmented now you've got new media what I call do-it-yourself media I don't yeah, call it new yeah, media so yeah. I, call I call it personal I call media do-it-yourself me uh, yeah. sorry personal media is what I call yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's exactly right it's uh, uh, which which is cool I mean people can uh, do it themselves and, and even us old media folks have to be more interactive you know, mm -hmm. uh, with people now what advice would I give to young people uh, none. I'd say give me some advice because um, <laughs> Get on young town. people are the ones who are, are really in demand these days. Uh, you're the ones who know how to work these new gadgets and uh, uh, for this new century. Uh, you've got the energy uh, to to uh, get out there and live off the ground, literally, just like 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 good journalists, journalistic uh, but guerrilla journalistic troopers, mm -hmm. and um, uh, hold down two or three different freelance gigs at once and. Um, uh, be versatile, uh, and uh, you're well in tune with. It. I got a 23 year old son who teaches oh. me this stuff all the time, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's when when he has enough patience to, 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 to give his old man some time. And um, uh, but but no, I think uh, the best advice I could give would be that journalism is uh, the medium may change, but journalism stays the same. You have to be uh, accurate and accountable and. Um, have credibility, or nobody will listen to you, unless you're Fox News. But they have special <laughs> magic, uh, and um, I uh, uh, think that's kind of like uh, you ever watch The Wire? Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, right. like, like yeah. uh, Omar, <laughs> like <laughs> Omar said, names change, the game stays the same. Yeah, <laughs> that's journalism. You know, okay, folks, he knows how to pick like, a good barbecue too. So listen to this man. Right on. <laughs> it's an honor to meet you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. You got it. Thank you. <laughs>